nine plus one. So we should start. I like, I love respecting people who are responsible. I mean, to be on time. So let's see. I give the microphone to Hasiel, Jorge, Gabi, Diana. Uh, you have the microphone muted. Excellent. I'll give it to Melina Elizalde uh, and see if you can say something only to check that your microphones. Okay, in the meantime, guys, uh, this is the first uh, slide, and I have a question about the cognitive, cognitive tools. Are they for teaching or for learning? Who can give me the answer? Jorge, you can you can unmute your microphone in. Eddie, could you please tell us exactly why you think it's for both? I'll give it. I'll give you the microphone. Jorge, you can. Okay, go ahead, Jorge. Thank you. Yes, I have. I think it both. Uh, uh, both are, are very good. Uh, they are. They are cognitive tools. Both. Uh, they. They use. We use them to teach or for learning. So. Uh, I think they are for, for cognitive tools. Okay, thank you. And I guess Eddie said, yeah, for both, as well as mm, Veronica, you said for both. I'm going to give you the microphone, Veronica, so you can tell us why you think it is for both. As well for Eddie, I gave you the microphone, but you haven't accepted it. You need to accept it in order to use it. Go ahead, Ivan. My, Ivan has a microphone open. Please mute it if you if you don't use it. Veronica, go ahead, please. Ivan, please mute your oh, microphone. Thank you. Oh, Veronica, sorry. I consider the is for both teaching and learning. Uh, in the first stage, we have to be able to guide the students how to they going to use all of that amazing tools to to acquire knowledge. So when we are able to to guide them. Um, if they have any problem where they are using them, we can we can help them. So, as uh, as we see in uh, in the in the you know our last forum, uh, we have problems with the uh, with the use of the bulky and blogger. So we are learning there, but also you are teaching us there. So I think that is the reason why why is for both teaching and learning. Because as we see in the last forum, we learn about it, but also you can teach us about it. Okay, thank you. It's not exactly a cognitive tool, but it's something like that. Okay, thank you. Excellent. Anyone else? Please take the microphone. Thank you, Veronica, for muting your microphone. Remember, Haciel, Jorge, Gabi, Diana, you had the microphones. You can unmute it and use it, as well as Ivan. And I don't know what's wrong with Eddie. Yes, Ivan, go ahead, please. Only mute it. Unmute it, sorry. Melina, I'm giving you the microphone also. Go ahead, please, Ivan. A little, a little, a little. Hello. It's too loud. Too, too low. I, I, I mean, that's all. I would say about the cognitive tools. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe the cognitive tools are for 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 learning. I think it's like an input that we got when we are in the computer. I would say that cognitive tools 
we use it just for uh, learning. Uh -huh. uh, that's all. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ivan. Pauline, please mute the microphone. Thank you. thank you. Melina, you can unmute your microphone if you want to use it. A little low. Um, well, uh, about the cognitive tools, I just, um, well, now it's clear to me that they are the, the, the tools that, that we can use to learn with, not, um, well, that we, we can use them to learn with, like, with the experience or, um, when we're using computer, computer like games or whatever, but not like the old-fashioned way that we learn from them, but we learn with them, um, and that's it, I guess. Okay, thank you. I gave the microphone to Nadia Sasueta. You can use it if you want it, and also I gave it to. Luis Angel, you can use it. If you don't use it, source mute it, please. Luis and Nadia, you mix open. Okay. Could you please mute your microphone if you don't use it? And the question is in the air. Armando, I gave you the microphone. You can use it if you if you want it, please. Okay, guys. All of you except Mayra, Eddie, have the microphone. You can use it. Remember, just unmute it and start saying something. I need to know exactly what your opinion what your opinion is about this question. Your answer, not your opinion. Why? Because it is actually Gabi. Ah, now I can see the screen. Mm. Could you please ask Nadia if she is using Mozilla Firefox? Can you guys see the screen, all of you? Okay, yeah, it is. Okay, it's a particular problem. Jorge, you want to say something? Go ahead, please. Safari. Mm, it's okay. Safari is okay. I can hear you, but... Go ahead, please, Jorge. Okay, Naya Sueta, you have the microphone. Go ahead, please. I'm saying that I can listen to you, but... Jorge, your voice goes comes I don't know what's wrong with the the microphone Nadia welcome okay mm. Armando I'm gonna give the microphone Go ahead, please. And Nadia, please mute your microphone. Go ahead, Armando. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, what, are, what is the question? I just logged in. Ah, uh, can you see? It? it is on the screen. I'm to, I'm asking you about the cognitive cognitive tools, if they are for teaching or for learning. What's your opinion? Uh, I believe it's for both. Why? Uh, well, students, cognitive tools are, are great for students because it's a different way to to have a regular class, and we also learn from them because we experiment uh, teaching with uh, technology. So I believe it's for both teaching and learning. Okay, thank you. Okay, please mute your microphone. 
Oh, sorry. It's okay. Okay. Can you? Oh, I'm reading what Eddie. You can read also what Eddie, Eddie wrote. Okay. Thank you, Eddie. And what about the, the the slide you have on the screen? It says cognitive tools refer to learn with technology, not through technology. Can you see the difference between the two statements? Can you tell me what you think about these statements? Gabby, go ahead, please. You had a microphone. Only unmute it. As well as Diana. Go ahead, please. Thank you. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Thank you. I think that uh, cognitive Okay, cognitive tools we are going to learn with because they are like partners. We are going, they are there with us in the classroom and we are going to uh, work with them. And not as the old way that it used to be through, that they are going to show us how to do it, but we didn't do it actually. So with uh, this new way, we are going to work with. That's what I think. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Could you please? Thank you, Gabby. Anyone else, please unmute the microphone. Okay, Eddie, I agree with you, but not everyone has an iPad, remember? <laughs> so it is okay when you. When you have a computer, sometimes, for example, there's a, there are some dictionaries you can you can uh, use by double clicking on the word, and then you have a pronunciation as well as a meaning and examples. But not everyone has access to uh, not all of us have access to uh, those dictionaries. They are expensive. Nadia, Sasveta, you had a microphone. You can use it, please. Hey, Veronica. Hello. Go ahead, please, Nadia. Hello. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. What was the question? <laughs> I I couldn't see my my screen. Ah, uh, okay. On the screen we have uh, two sentences that it was on the on the first uh, passage, uh, written passage. It says cognitive tools refer to learn with technology, as opposed to learning through technology. And the question is, what's, what's your opinion about this? How can you say, it, for example, that students are learning with technology? Okay, I think this, this means that we, we can use technology um, to give some of our classes to teach students, but um, I think it refers that it's it's not the only thing we can do. It's just like a way to teach them, but there are uh, also other, um, I don't know how you say it, other... Devices? Um, tools, devices you can use to it. That's what I think it means. Okay, thank you. I don't know if it was clear. <laughs> yeah, it is clear. I, I, I can't really see my screen yet. I, I just see you blank. Okay. Thank you, Nadia. Uh, guys, so just unmute your microphone and you can use it. Go ahead, Armando. Uh, another thing, I believe uh, we should learn new technology. Uh, not just use it uh, to look for information or to communicate. But we should uh, know how to use technology. I believe that little kids that are growing, well, they're growing uh, at a, at a, I don't know how to say that, a, par, a pair with technology, and they're going to learn with it. Actually, some, I don't know if it, if it 
ever happened to you guys that our little kids sometimes know how to uh, move or use a telephone more than we do? I believe that's learning with technology. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, I'm going to give you an example. All of us use PowerPoints once in a while in the classroom. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Okay, but when I'm using PowerPoints in the classroom, I'm trying to, I don't know, perhaps uh, teach vocabulary items, and then I'm using technology uh, to help students learn through technology. But the first sentence, sentence that is uh, the most important sentence in, do, in this uh, slide is when we give the students the chance, as Eddie wrote in a way, uh, using the bookie, when we, for example, uh, last Wednesday I asked my students in the first course of St. Riemas to do a narrated PowerPoint. And they must pay attention about the pronunciation as well as the sentences. Yes? So they send me their presentations. And the first seven presentations I received were excellent, but there were two that were the uh, students were kind of uh, omitting some sounds. I use the word, I'm sorry, if you. If you use, uh, I mean, if you are from Mazatlan, I, 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 I'm used to, I, I tell my students, don't speak like, like people from Mazatlan. Why? Because sometimes here in Sinaloa, we don't pronounce the S, especially when the S is at the end. So these two students were omitting the sounds of the S. And as I said, okay, why don't you try to send it to a classmate and then he or she can tell you what is wrong. And then in the second time, they send me that, that, that presentation, they really pronounce the final S. What I'm trying to say is that when you give students the chance to use technology, technology really helps them to identify some mistakes, at least using uh, PowerPoint. As, as Eddie says, it's another way. There are too many ways. Thanks God we, we have technology. But anyway, this is the, 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 the big difference. It is not the same to teach through technology or to learn through technology as well as to learn with technology. Let me open a piece of software because I'm having a little problem on my screen. Okay, but you know more examples. Why don't you tell us, everyone, please tell us what you think about this with and through technology, especially about learning. Go ahead, Jorge. Yes, sir. I'm just thinking about uh, your saying. In my home, I have two, two examples. For example, me, myself, and uh, myself, I never use technology to, to teach or learn. Uh, and I'm starting to learn with technology and, and th at the beginning, this is very hard for me, but uh, uh, working and working, I chose learning. In the other example is, uh, <laughs> you, you can hear my baby. <coughs> he, he is uh, one, one year and a half. And he he looks like uh, he 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 take to the, the 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 computer and looks like he always been with that computer in the in her mom's stomach. I don't know. It's amazing, but uh, it's just two examples that come to my mind. Okay, thank you, Eddie. I guess you pro the problem is in your computer or your, your iPad because you said the same in the first session that the the sound goes off and and on. And on. I guess it is your iPad. Is everybody having the same problem as Eddie said? The sound going on and off? Okay, yeah, Eddie is your iPad. You need a new one. Okay, you need a new laptop, sorry. 
I know. Uh, something so maybe that uh, you you didn't uh, didn't plug the headset well, or maybe you have a fan near you. But anyway, okay, guys. Uh, what about this uh, example, Veronica? You can use a microphone. Uh, yes, teacher. I I I want to say something. Mm -hmm. I think the 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 big difference with both is that. Mm, the connected tool are designed for a developer specific skill and abilities uh, to the learner, focused in a specific area or topic. The learner interacts directly with the uh, with the technology to acquire or to discover that new knowledge that they need to 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 achieve um, any ability or skill or topic. I don't know. And and but the other hand. Uh, through the technology, as you said, as uh, you give uh, a, an excellent example about it, uh, is only the teacher used to present uh, the class or use the technology to to show some examples or to make some reference and, and that's it. So I think this is a big difference. Uh, the first one, uh, with technology, uh, the student uh, interact directly, directly with the technology to acquire a relationship. And by the other hand, only use to present some information and that's it. The student don't interact with the, with the technology, only use and that's it. Okay. In my opinion. Thank you. Yes, as I told you last week, uh, there are three different sta uh, stages uh, in using technology. The first one is when we teachers start using technology. The second stage or step is when we start using technology and designing and modifying uh, activities to use with technology. And the third stage, in my opinion, the most important is when we give students a chance to use technology in order to help them learn. For example, what do you try to use Boki for your students? You can you can ask your students to do something using Voki, and then in that way you're going to check not exactly their pronunciation, but you can check their writing skills. Why? Because they will have to type a message in order for the avatar to speak it, to say it. If your students have problems with spelling or with grammar or punctuation, it's going to be something like a mess. I mean, for the avatar trying to say those words. Try it and tell me what happened. That's only another example to use technology. I mean, to give students the chance to learn to use to learn with technology. Yes. Okay. Let me go to the next slide. Uh, I asked you about Voki, yes, and I want to thank everyone. I know it was a difficult process for some of you. Yes, when I saw that some of you were having problems is when I uploaded the tutorial. But honestly, I didn't want to uh, mess with that. I mean, uh, the best way to learn is by doing. Yes, I was not trying to prove that. It's only because if I go into the traditional way of teaching to have you listen to me and do this, do that, etc., well, it's kind of a, I don't like that. I prefer to give you help when you need it. I said, I wrote, if you need, if you need help, send me a message. Nobody did except one person. And that person never, never read my message. But anyway. Geraldine, you had a microphone. Guys, remember that that chat is for academic purposes, not for socializing or talking about financing. I'm going to tell financing. <laughs> OK, it's OK, Eddie. Can you hear me, teacher? Yes, Geraldine, go ahead. Okay, good night to all of you. Well, I just want to make a comment. I understood that 
student through uh, technology is like just watching videos or using projectors or things like that for students. But uh, learning with technology is like make them to do their own technology and practicing their knowledge. I don't know if I'm, am I right or not. Yes, you're right. Wait is when students use it no. their own. Yes, yes. Sorry. Want to say something else, Yelin? No, no, no. I'm waiting your answer. Okay. Yeah, I agree with you. Yes, and I guess all of us have the same opinion. When students are using technology, they are learning with technology. But when they they design their own, uh, how can I say? Uh, learning evidences like PowerPoints, Voki, or and other tools I'm going to tell you, yes? But when we are in the class and we are teaching the students, I don't know, perhaps, perhaps vocabulary, uh, idioms, whatever, we use video, as you said, video, PowerPoint, uh, Calamillo, etc. We are trying to help students learn through technology. But uh, for me, the best way for them is to learn with technology when they start using technology. Anyone else? Okay. Yeah, please, hit the mic. Oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. I know, I'm, I'm just saying that that's what we did with creating the box and, and all the stuff. So we start learning, creating it or with the technology, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, you're right. Yeah, but I was talking about your students. Yes, in this moment, you are my students and you were learning with technology. Now, let's go to the second step, another step, to give your students the chance to use Voki. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Yes. And I'm sorry for interrupting you, Geraldine. Sorry, sorry. I'm hitting my mouth. No, it's okay. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay, guys. Any, anyone else? Okay, let me ask you a few questions about your bookies. Do you remember to do what I asked? I don't know, maybe it was on Wednesday about the appearance, about the message. For example, we listen to some really stingy, stingy messages, something like a two or three sentences. And what about the decent name? For example, I read something about, I don't know exactly, evil, something like that. <laughs> it was a girl. I don't know, I'm not sure if it wasn't you, Diana, but it was some, it was a girl. It was a girl who, I mean, why am I asking you this? Because if you send your students to the blog, your students will be uh, checking the blog at home, and perhaps some parents, some parents might get annoyed, might get, uh, I don't know, angry when you see this kind of a, I mean, it's better to, to this, choose a decent name, yes? And also, uh, and also, well, we need to give the message, the welcoming message, very clear for our students. Remember, that's going to be another tool for you. And as one of you wrote, I don't remember exactly who did it, it is a new learning environment. Yes, it could be also a new, lear a new teaching environment. could be both at the same time also. But I guess it's going to be more a learning environment. And if you see your students, for example, uh, designing their own bookies, trying to say, I don't know, it doesn't matter the level, saying hello to someone else or creating uh, different things with technology, you're going to see the, the, the big difference. OK, this is the first step. And I guess all of you went through some with problems, some without any problems. And I see that. Yes, Mayra, I do agree with you. 
There is a lack of technology, but remember, for me, technology, using technology is not uh, like having technology in the classroom. No. For me, technology, I might be wrong, yes? For me, technology is to give the students the chance to go to the internet at home, at a cyber cafe, at the computer lab, and use the technology. If you are using it for teaching or if they are using it for learning. For me, using technology in the classroom is not exactly to be in a classroom with a projector and a big computer and iPad, etc. For me, the best way to use technology is when students are using technology for learning. But as I said, I might be wrong. Okay, Eddie, I do agree with you. Yes, usually uh, it is the, the best way for students to do assignments. Yes, copy and paste. But what about if you ask your students to uh, research something, investigate something? I don't know. Could be any level, for example. Okay, guys, try to uh, guess uh, what the rules for, if we are talking about grammar, try to guess what the rules for the third person in singular in pres simple present tense is, and then students might go to the internet, copy and paste, but they have to explain the in, in the class to their classmates. In that way, you are avoiding students to copy and paste. And Nadia Villegas, I do agree with you also. Many public schools, kids don't have money, but if you see, they have cell phones, Okay, Mitzi, it's okay, but mm, even if they write it, I mean, if they do handwriting, it could be something like a copy and paste. Exactly what it is on the screen, they can write it on, 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 on the paper. But the best way is when, when they explain. For example, Eddie has, I mean, you, you work at, I guess you work at Senda or Chapultepec. Okay, guys, but why are you writing? You can use the microphones. This is the magic of technology. When you want to read something, somebody else wrote something. And... Okay, Geraldine, Veronica, you had a microphone. Just unmuted. Go ahead, Geraldine. I just have a question. Uh, do you think it's a good idea to use this kind of technology with elementary kids? They going to be able to handle like the bulky and all the stuff. Okay, Yeldin, that's a good question. I have the answer, but I prefer someone else in this classroom because this is a classroom, a virtual classroom, gives the answer. Veronica, you had a microphone. If nobody gives you the answer, I give mine. But I would like someone to give the answer to that question. It's an interesting question. Veronica, go ahead. Yes, teacher, about the comments, about the comments of my teammates. I can say we as educators, we as educators have the um, have to encourage them to use the information. Yes, it's true that most of the time when the teachers say, "Oh, you have a homework, go to the internet and investigate something." Most of the time, students, because I have uh, children, most of the time they copy and paste. But as you say, uh, at the time the that they present their work is, is a good moment to to encourage them to learn about the investigated. So we as educators have to have to engage them have to engage them to, to do in the best way the, the things. So if we encourage them they can they could learn about anything. And by the other hand, I know that the most of, of the schools don't have a lot of technology or a lot of computer to use in but as you say we can invite them to go to the internet to interested in that technology because if we don't do 
who want to do or who can do it. So we as educators have to, to, to show them the way, okay, if you don't have a computer in your home, please say your father, teacher Veronica, give you a homework. So please, father, give me 10 pesos because I, I need to do my homework. It is a good way because uh, we need to, 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 to be, be aware about that. Future is around the technology. So we as educators have to encourage them to use it. I don't know, it's my opinion. We have to do. How? I don't know. We have many, too, many, many strategies and many tools to do it. So it's all work. So let's to do it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Gabby, go ahead, please. You have the microphone. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Hello, can you hear me? OK, thank you. Uh, I want to respond to uh, Geraldine's ask, uh, question. Um, I think the elementary kids can definitely can use uh, this tools like Bucky. As we all can see, the small kids can handle so the much complicated games in iPads or in computers, uh, things that maybe the grown-ups can do. And I think that we, uh, we as teachers encourage them to use it, uh, these tools and give the appropriate instructions, they are able to do it. That's my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Nadia, you wanna you can use a microphone, Nadia Villegas. Jorge, you can also use it if you want. Can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. Can you hear me? Okay. Oh, okay. Um, well, in my case, I use um, the internet or the technology for uh, make some worksheet. I have a lot a great worksheet. I search at the activities on the in the on the internet. So it's not only uh, to uh, project something in the projector or something like that because maybe we don't have the tools in the public schools or the kids they don't have money or there's only that protects that my mom doesn't have mom money and I can go for the fever or something like that. Uh, I think this is a great tool just to find and give to the students a great worksheet. I do it all the time and for me it's perfect. Okay, thank you. Okay, guys, anyone else? Jorge, go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think it's the perfect time to to start in to involve them to uh, this kind of tools because they are they at that age they start to learn about the internet and then they can go to the wrong way learning the negative things and all that kind of things. Okay, thank you. Uh, I guess that uh, you, we're forgetting uh, uh, Yeldon's question. I, I guess the question is that uh, if elementary kids who do, do not know how to read or who do not know how to use a computer, for example, if they want to open an account at Boki, it's going to be complicated for them because they don't know too much English. But what I do, Yeldin, I'm going to give you my answer, yes, if nobody else wants uh, to give uh, his or her answer. Go ahead, please. Okay, what I do is this, for example, what I would do, because I don't have kids, I mean students that age, I would ask my students to use my Voki account. I can have two Voki accounts. Actually, I have five for every different group. Yes, and what I do is this, I get the account and I give the, the, the email address as well as the password to the parents or to the kids so they can go and use my Evoki. In that way, I can show it in that class, yes, what I would do, yes, so you can do that also. And remember, with Evoki, Evoki, yes, in your, blog, in your blog, with Evoki, you can use three different ways to uh, transmit the message. The first one, which I don't recommend, is to use the telephone. It's expensive. The second one is by typing. Is what you did and what I did in the presentation. But the third one is by uploading a recorder a conversation or something. Yes, could be instruction for home. But the question is, 
uh, the, the point is that you can ask your students to do that by giving them access to an already made account. And also you can have the total control of the, the account. And then you can show your students by showing off what they did. Yes, it's better. I, I call it it's an, an academic showing off. But anyway, there are too many ways. Excellent, Nadia. Spelling B. But the question, the answer for the question, Geraldine, for me, from me, from me, is yes. Even students in at kindergarten. Why? Because you can ask the students something. For example, you can interview, get a your cell phone or a recorder device, and you can ask students, "Hey guys, what's your name?" Students can give you your name. They understand the question, and they just give their name. Another question is could be, um, "What colors do you know?" For example. And students can tell you, they don't know how to write, but they can say, they say blue, even if they don't have that, the exact pronunciation for that, they can tell you blue, red, yellow, etc. but they will give you an answer. And then that's a recording. And then you can use that recording in the Boki. You can go and upload to your Boki, another Boki. You can, you can design a lot of Bokis. And I, honestly, I recommend you have different accounts. I have exactly seven different accounts at Gmail. One that I use with you, another one that I use with students in the face-to-face -face classroom, another one for students at Centro Idiomas in the first course, another one for students, uh, teachers who are at the General Siete, for example, are teaching them how to design this kind of uh, activities, and also two more for the doctor's degree, and also for my students at the Diplomados at the Maestria. But anyway, so you have different Gmail, uh, uh, email addresses, and you can use different Voki accounts. Well, let me go to the first one. Eddie, I'm going to ask you for permission to, to use something that I think it is important. Uh, let me see. It's because, um, well, you can see on the screen, yes? It's about attendance and performance. So, I have uh, the post you did, I guess, uh, yesterday. Can I use it or can I go to the next slide and add show? Okay. It's only for academic purposes, yes? Uh, in this part, before I show the one that I asked permission for, you can see that mm, I I thought it was really, really explicit about what I wanted, wanted you to do. However, some of you mm, did not read it or did not follow instruction exactly. And also I agree with Erica about that. Web pages. Okay, so let me go with this. Why did I did I ask you to go to Blogspot or Blogger? Uh, because uh, in the four the next four week weeks you're gonna use this space virtual space to do different things, and sometimes we cannot do it do it in different blogs. For example, another great company for blogs is Edu Blogs but it doesn't let us do um, some things, yes? And I, I saw that about four of you went into Google+, Plus, etc., which is a great website for blogs, but not exactly let us do what I want you to do. What I want you to do is to use this tool that is free for you, yes? So I'm calling the attention for those who did it. And this is Eddie why I ask you for permission. Remember, uh, we have deadlines. Yes, it's not only for Eddie. Yes, it's for all of us. Why? Because as Eddie might have, maybe you had a problem to post. Yes, and you did it yesterday, last night. And I can see, not exactly, remember, this is not a regaño for Eddie, not for everyone, but uh, 
I went into different users at random. Yes, and you can see on the screen, for example, when uh, these four different users uh, first connected to Chamilo, then the latest, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and most of you have uh, performed 100% of the, the activities. But you can see, for example, at the bottom of every report is the number of connections. For example, the first person has exactly 13 hours spent in the course, but only 60 connections. I'll tell you about this later in a few minutes. And then the second person at the top on the right has 91 hours and 424 connections. It is great in a way. The third person on the left at the bottom, 88 hours but only 92 connections. And the last person, the one on the, on the right at the bottom, 57 hours but only 81 connections. What is this about? This is something about cheating or trying to cheat on the, on the teacher, trying to cheat on our emails, etc., etc. Remember, this is only uh, one of the ways teachers and administrators of the platform can use to know if you are really doing your assignments. Let me show you the first slide and, and it's going to be a lot clearer for you. Look at this. this uh, at the top, we have the name of the, uh, of the course, Educational Technologies in the Internet 2012. And on the right, it was the name of the person, but I deleted the name because I don't want to talk about the person. I want to talk about this. And then I took the same image, but about the time. This is about week four. This person completed the assignment in nine minutes, 47 seconds. Yes. In the form, this person spends only 14 seconds. This tells me a lot about this person, that this person is not reading what your emails, what his or her emails are posting. Remember that the way to learn in this course, in this modality, in this environment, is by uh, collabor collaborating, by reading everyone. Give me a second because the battery, the battery is going on, off. A second, please. Okay, sorry. He, Hasiel, yes, you have a question. Go ahead, please. Can you can you hear me, guys? Yes, teacher. Thank you. The question about this, now that I'm seeing the, the completed tasks and everything, every time I, I like log in and I check an assignment, uh, even if I haven't completed it, if I checked it, it already appears like I already completed the assignment. I don't know if this is going to affect this in a matter of time or something, because, well, sometimes I just like go in and check what I have to do and maybe I'll do it later. or. But it already appears like I had already completed 100% of the assignment. I don't know if I'm supposed to control that or how I'm, I'm supposed to do that. OK, thank you. Yes, you're right. Every time you go in and, and, and check, a uh, computer text has completed it. Yes, but this is only one tool. The, uh, the other one, um, I don't have the permission to show it to you. And we talk to the students by using the email. For example, don't say that I send you an email if I did it. Yes, I have sent emails, personal emails, for students who have kind of a, not exactly following instructions. Yes, don't say, yes, you did a teacher for me. No, no. No se came in. Sorry. Uh, in, in a good sense. Uh, and I talk to those who are not following instructions personally in by via email. And then the problem is that we can notice with different tools, exactly what you do and exactly the time you spend in every activity, even if the form has mm, registered that as completed. This is only one tool. Yes, that's why when you go into the form, you see completed, 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 and this is the time I'm showing you. But the other ones tells me 
that as a teacher and also to the administrator, the time you exactly spend in the in the in the course, yes. Why? Because, for example, if you go into the course and you spend five minutes without doing anything, the computer takes you out, yes. And then you have to log in again in order to continue with the activity. There are too many tricks, yes. I won't tell you about that, yes. Uh, what I'm telling you, what I'm telling you is. You should, and most of you, most of you do it, and I really congratulate you. Yes, most of you do it. You go and do exactly, you read what your emails wrote, but some of you, a few of you, things that a few of you do not do it. And, well, I can tell you that you're not cheating anyone, but you, I mean, talking about those who, who try to cheat. But let's forget about that regaños. I'm sorry. But I had to say it, yes, because I sent emails to three people, and I guess they never read their emails. And, well, I had the responsible ones here, and I'm glad for that. So, okay, Eddie, don't feel bad. I'm sorry. I, I, I use it because there was not time to, to give you a chance to look at it, because when I opened the, the forum, the computer asks me about the, the starting time as well as the ending time. Yes? So, uh, because the, the time was almost done, the form was going to be uh, closed, and you, 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 you didn't have a chance to, to look at it. That's what I, I, I did. It. Sorry. Actually, if I haven't seen you here in, in the conference, I, I would have sent you this uh, image, etc. But anyway. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. It's the age. I'm getting older and older. Sorry. Forget what, forget what I said. I congratulate you because you are the responsible ones. Let's continue with this. Uh, before we continue, I have a question, and that's the question on the screen. Any comments about this? It's okay, Eddie. I'm sorry. Okay, Gabby. Uh, teacher. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, I have a question. Uh, you you had you had uh, two numbers of entries. One was about sixty, and the other one was four hundred and sixty-four. So, uh, is it good to have four hundred and sixty-four entries uh, rather than sixty? Or which one is better? I, I didn't get that one. Uh, where? Here? In this, on the slide? Or what do you mean? In this one? And exactly in this one. Uh, yeah, what is the number of connection to this training? Uh, the first one has 60. The other one has 424, sorry. Uh, and so is it better to have more entries? Ooh, the time is almost over. Sorry, sorry. Uh, no. No, you're right. Uh, this is only, uh, for example, we have four minutes uh, remaining because I, I extended uh, the class for two hours because I made a mistake in the computer and I started at eight in the computer. But anyway, no, for example, for me, uh, this guy, this person who has 424 is not exactly a, a really dedicated person. No, it's because I go and see exactly what he or she did with this con in, in the time he or she connected. Not exactly the number. You can have... Uh, only 20 connections, yes, but I've gone and I see the 20, okay, he or she is doing what I what I want you to do. You will, do you know what I mean? I get it. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Not Everything is so clear. Yes, Veronica. I'm sorry, yes? Teacher, I say that everything is okay, everything is clear. We got it. Okay, for, please forget about this. I'm getting older. No, it's not a regaño. Okay, guys, the next one, because we have about three minutes and a half, is a really, really, really aggressive question for you. Not aggressive, academically speaking. Does anybody know what a wiki is?
You can type. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Tell us about it, please. Okay. Before the conference is over, you can use a microphone. Only unmute it and use it. This is exactly an extra assignment. I want you to find out what a wiki is, and also you can go at YouTube. And if you if you go in and find, let me type it, wikis in plain English. Sorry about the mistake of English, no capital letter, but I'm really slow at typing. You can go you, to YouTube and try to find a good tutorial on wikis. It, it is called wikis in plain English. Why? Because next week you're going to use this tool. We have the wiki at the Shamilo platform, and I'm sure that nobody told you about this in the Propedeutico. Who was the teacher at the Propedeutico, Mr. Pina? Oh, Renzo. Did he tell you about the wikis? Okay. Okay, well, please do this extra assignment because we have a minute and 40 seconds left. Do this as an assignment, please. Go find out what a wiki is, and then I'll tell you exactly what to do with this wikis next week. Okay, guys, uh, I have some homework to do in the doctor's degree, and I have to go, and also we have a minute and 18 seconds left. Thank you for being here. Uh, I hope you really, really are learning with this kind of conferences, this kind of sessions. And I'm sorry if I get this kind of a grumpy calling your attention. Sorry. Okay, guys. Thank you. Thank you for you. Thank you, all of you. Okay, guys, this is about to close by, the, by itself. So thank you for being here. Have a good night, and I'll see you online on Monday. First, God. Have a nice weekend. You too. Thank you, Erika. Bye-bye. Okay, I have to close this. Bye-bye. Thank you.